linear program is calling on the stuff you've learnt so far by watching all the videos on chapter 10 and all the videos on chapter 11. So I'm not going to go over all that again, but I am going to work through question 1 with you. So that's on page 539, according to it, model A, B, max, worker 1, worker 2, So 5, 18, 360, 5, 4, 1, 50. Okay, so what this means is that worker 1 can work for five, takes 5 minutes to work on model A, 18 minutes to work on model B, and has a total of 360 minutes available to be spent. Worker 2 is 5 minutes on A, 4 minutes on B, and only has, excuse me, only has 150 minutes to be working. So there is a stepwise process you go through here. Okay, the first step is decision variables. So what that means is you need to define. So we say let model A equal X, let model B equal Y. So there we have our decision variables. We now have an X and a Y. So we can now work with our CAS calculator and our graphs and all that sort of stuff. Now it says the next step, so that's, that's actually part A, done. Okay, the next step is to write the constraints as linear in equations. So this table has the constraints. Okay, so somewhere in here we need to pull out the constraints. So if model A is X and worker 1 spends 5 minutes on that, so it's 5X. Okay, so 5 times the number of model A's he creates plus... 18 times by the model B's he creates must be less than or equal to 360 minutes. So there's one. The second constraint, worker 2, is 5x plus 4y must be less than or equal to 150. Now, chances are there are other constraints that are just implicit in the question. You cannot have a negative number of model A's built and a negative number of model B's built. So x must be greater than or equal to 0 and y must be greater than or equal to zero. So there's our constraints. The next step is to graph it. Now I'm not gonna go through it, I will show you the graph that results, but I'm not gonna go through that with you on camera. If you would like to know how to graph these sort of things, head back to the video prior to this one. But okay, and we're back with our graph. So the blue line is this one, the red line is this one, and I've shaded the region. So the feasible region, don't forget your key, Is the, is the non shaded area, so it's this area down here. Okay, and these two just mean we're above the axes, so we don't generally draw them, we just know about them if that makes sense. You could shade beneath if you wanted, but generally you don't need to. So the next part is to state the objective function, which means we need more information. So the next bit of information is the company makes $2.50 for each Model A. for A and $4 for each model B that they sell. So the objective function, so that, that part there was C, the objective function, if we're making $2.50 for every A and $4 for every B, that's our profit. That's our objective function. So the information is right there in the question, we just need to write it down. Now we need to use linear programming methods to find how many of each radio should be made to maximise the takings. Now, to do that, we look at how many radios are going to maximise that profit. So if our profit is, you know, what is it, two and a half for every A and four dollars for every B, then we need to work out how many of each to make to, to maximise the profit. Now that's generally the corner points. Okay, so there are four possible options. Now it's not going to be that one for sure. Okay, definitely not going to be that one. Chances are in this question it's going to be this one right here. So we need to find that point of intersection. Now you know how to do that on your calculator. 
if you graph them. If you drew this on graph paper, you could probably get pretty close to reading it off your graph. Now, unfortunately, I haven't, so I'm going to have to go and work it out. And then I'll come back to you and we'll talk about how we know that that's going to be the maximum profit and we'll test it against the others as well. Okay, so I'm back and I've worked out that this is 18, 15. We know that this is 0, 20. And this one here is 30, 0. So there are, th oh, you can't see that, there are three points of interest. Okay, so I'm going to transcribe them over to here and we'll measure our profit. So what do we have? 0, 20, 18, 15, and 30, 0 are our three. I mean, and there is the fourth one, 0, 0, but that's not going to be very profitable, of course. So we could probably ignore that one. So now we substitute them into our objective function. So 2.5 times 0 plus 4 times 20. That's 80. Let's do the other simple one first. 2.5 times 30 plus 4 times 0. That comes out to 45. Okay, so if we pull this one down here, so we go 2.5 times 18 plus 4 times 15, that comes out at 105 dollars profit. So therefore this point here is the one that gives us the most profit. Now that's not enough to say it's that point there. What you now need to do is go back to your original question where you define a piece of paper here, where you defined your variables and you put it back into the original question. So to maximize profit, he, we, they, the company should make 18 of X, which was model A's, and 15 model B. That's what you need to do to finalize it, okay? Is answer it in words with the original stuff from the question. So that's linear programming. I'm not gonna do an application because it's the same thing, all right? All you've gotta do is, is practice getting the information out of the question and getting it into a table or getting it into those inner equations and going from there.